Right, so left hand one was your before, okay? Right hand one now was after, okay? Now, as we said, we can't see tension, but I think you're more aware now of how much tension you've had in the grip. And once you start putting tension in the thumbs there, there's tension there, there, and there. So, yes, we can prove Russ correct by saying your grip was wrong, but not because of where it was, is how you're bloody gripping it, screwing off a dear life. Now, potentially, your grip through time might weaken slightly, but I think you're always on the, on the side of stronger, as a Dustin Johnson is, as a Zach Johnson is, as a Paul Azinger was, as a Deval was. That's their personal grip. You're not ever going to be someone like a Spieth or an Alathaba or these guys who have got a weaker grip. Mako's got a strong grip. Hey, it does him all right, doesn't it, to be fair? So it's not strong as in good and bad. It's not weak as in good and bad. It's just, I'm here, you're there. What position can you hold the golf club in that returns the club back square? Exactly. That's what the grip's all about. Is it comfortable, creates power, and square the club face up? You can do those three things, your grip's fine. Okay? I mean, Furyk double overlaps it. Some guys have four knuckles, some have no. It's just personal preference okay there's no right or wrong a lot of times now if you were hitting a goal shot that resembled that kind of thing and your grip was it was i'll go yeah sorry Rob, you, you got a bit of a strong grip there you're closing the club face way too much we try some other ways to change that impact position without moving the grip if the grip was so embedded in that position but if the last result was well i'll take okay, if you want to try and break 95 regularly that's probably got to change something. Yeah. At the moment now, you can prove you prove to me you can return the club back square to path based on the numbers on there, not getting confused with close when it's closed and the path is out to win, okay? Oh, the club isn't okay. But top of the batch in there now, again, longer than you thought, okay? A little bit bow, but that's not a problem to be fair, okay? Look at the driver there now. So that, there's the club head coming to view now and then just keeps going back there. So your club is somewhere down here. It's not bad thing, you create power, it's fine. Okay. Full shoulder turn, back to target, I like that. What you've got to try and feel now, what you were doing before was that sort of was that lunge forward here, okay? Arm you said you felt was coming yeah. in. What was actually happening is was your hip was going too far this way and the shoulder this way. So the club now was I go back to frame, sorry. Your club was too far outside. Yeah. So if you brought your arm in, that'd be a good thing. But you felt on this shot when you hit that, oh my arm got too far tucked in. Yeah. So if you're feeling as your arm's done this, logic would suggest that I'd be going to go this further on the way down. But if you do that, you must miss the golf ball. So, and that's always a change from shot to shot. You're making little adjustments here. And so the feeling now is that sort of back center target. The arms are going to fall down now, sort of down your chest line this way, bringing that golf club down the shaft line. You see the club now coming nicely from the inside. The shaft itself is not dissecting the ball, whereas here, it's pretty much gone through the ball there, okay, the golf ball, okay, coming from out to in and across it. This one now is coming more down the title. Your shoulder, your right elbow, for me, is tucked in, which we want it to be in, truth be told, okay? Nicely connected there. Good left arm position there. Your shoulders are nice and square to target, okay? Good swing there. Hit the golf ball and release through the target up on the left side there. Yeah, foot could be a little bit more, but that's sort of clashing at straws. Overall, though, a good kind of functional movement there in terms of the swing. There's no sort of jerking or jarring off line. Body sort of staying, sort of your head sort of on that top of that tri um, arrow at the start there. You can see, yeah, a good sort of repeatable movement there that could certainly get her on a golf course and break 95. Okay, now this one doesn't look much different in terms of the movement there. It looks a bit more kind of tucked up round here maybe because that's maybe the feeling of I got tucked up with my arm. You felt it kind of at three and a half seconds, not actually at 3.13, but you felt oh, I was tucked up, so it must have been tucked up here. Yeah. So you put two and two together and get 22, not four, obviously. Yeah. Um, and through the boys, a little bit obviously cramped and a bit tight there, hence the follow-through not being quite as long. But it's always interesting for me to watch people's goals. And, okay, right, where's the club? Do you know where the club is? Oh, I, I do. And, and I'm everyone but everyone who's done that test, and I've had golfers off single-figure handicappers, they fail that test, especially the driver, by miles. They've got no clue where the club is. And if you believe the club's here, it's actually over here somewhere. So if you can't see the club and you're trying to feel where that club is... Yeah. It's pure guesswork. That's so really loosen things up. It's going to help. Okay. I, you know, I, I know I'm not a good enough golfer to consistently be able to have a club right back here and bring it back. It's going to, yeah. I, mean, I, I get where you're coming from in that regard. Okay, yeah. I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I'm always yeah. trying to keep it to yeah. the left. Yeah. yeah. If, but um, the thing is, yeah, the, if you try to shorten your swing by just going shorter, and I think one thing I would definitely encourage you not to do now is then you go, oh, my swing's too long, I've got to don't go away now and start trying to shorten your golf swing. If you can swing there comfortably, yes, there's a few miss hits in there, but I'd rather you swing at that length that's your kind of your norm. And the way we would then potentially want to shorten your swing if we needed to in the future would be a different way, not just swing it shorter. 
a longer swing or an overswing of the term would be is a symptom of a movement going wrong somewhere. It's like someone with a cough or a cold. Well, don't cough, sir. I'm still going to cough. <laughs> what, stop sneezing. I've got allergies. Cure the allergy. Cure the fever. Cure the problem, not just try to stop a symptom. You try and stop a symptom, you're not going to improve it. You can mask it to some extent. You can put duct tape on their mouth or something or cover the bag over the head or something, kind of but you're not going to improve it, okay? So don't go away down. I need to shorten that swing. Your swing's not too long, okay? Yes, I get where you're coming from having a longer swing. Have I got the control of that goal to come back to the ball consistently? Eh, maybe not yet. But rather than sort of step back and go short, short, short and go tappy, 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 stick with that. If you get a bad shot, yeah, okay. Course manager, chip out sideways, back on the golf course and play from there, okay? Because the time then you do it the ball properly, you did a couple of shots there, you're going to gain that two or 22, 30 yards and get on the golf course with this club. And I think as much as we can encourage using this club, the better, okay? At the moment now, I wouldn't sort of go on the golf course yet until you sort of walk out of here with maybe 10 shots in a row, you go, that's great. If you have five shots in a row and five ones that ping around the side of this somewhere, you're not ready yet. Because if you're not doing it here, out there is a completely different kettle of fish. To be honest, whilst we're not looking <laughs> at this, almost for ego, let's be honest. Yeah, of course it is, 100%. Exactly. That's the club I need to get better at. Well, yeah, well, yeah, both, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's gonna be, they're both going to be used off the tee as, a, as some extent. Um, and in some ways off the fairway, you can yeah. use the club. It's, that's it. And it's, it's the par five. At the, at the moment... I'm essentially playing a par five as par six. Yeah, because it's four shots to get to the green, yeah, yeah. Because if you're hybrids and irons, it's a long way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can't get to green yeah, regulation. Especially the bottom, because they're all uphill. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you're almost trying to almost force it and push it more too much to try and get that yardage back. Your yeah, clubs yeah. aren't designed that far, and then you just, then you duff the shot. Exactly. And then you're playing <laughs> catch up all the time because you're on the back. So I've been behind the eight ball trying to do something you can't do. Exactly. And then I'm make a mess of it. Par six with my handicap two shots above that, so that they're probably par eight. Yeah, and if you have a bad shot in there somewhere, there's something wrong. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Good, but yeah, work on that grip pressure, work on that down thing transition with the arms sort of dropping and falling, rather than kind of out this way with the right shoulder going too far this way. That will change the path and square the club a bit better. Okay, mate, make sense? Yes.